So in section R, inhalation sedation with the nitrous oxide. Uh, on the bottom, so we commonly divide the whole subject of CNS depression, of decreasing electrical activity in the brain and creating a state of, stage of general anesthesia. We divide uh, these stages of, of uh, slowing down electrical activity in the brain into four stages. So there is the analgesic phase, uh, stage one, the analgesic phase. So the analgesic phase is called that because uh, it reduces pain. Now, even each of these stages are further subdivided. Stage one is further subdivided into three planes. So there's plane one, where there's just relaxation. When you give nitrous oxide, it has a relaxing effect. And then on the next page, there's uh, plane two, which is moderate analgesia which means moderate pain relief, some degree of amnesia, a loss of remembering what's happening, and that's the plane that you usually want to use nitrous oxide at, is what's called plane two of stage one. We'll just emphasize stage one, that's what you've learned, but it's really plane two of stage uh, one. Now, plane three is a little bit deeper. All of these are based on the dose of nitrous oxide or anest general anesthesia one uses. And as you increase the dose, you go deeper and deeper down. So uh, complete analgesia and amnesia is reached in plane three. Uh, now, what is important, and I think you've all learned this, is stage two. It's a paradoxical stage because as you go deeper below the stage of analgesia, the patient actually becomes hyper, even though they're going deeper into uh, an, uh, this anesthesia. There is increased sympathetic response. Their heart rate may speed up. Uh, they may exhibit dysphoria or agitation. The relevance of this is when you're administering nitrous oxide, if you start to see pupillary dilation, dilation of the pupil, in speeding up of the heart rate, increased agitation or dysphoria, it's not that you haven't given enough nitrous oxide, you've gone, given them too much. You've gone too deep, because you're in this excitement phase. Now the excitement phase, as you keep giving more, doesn't last very long, because as you give more, you pretty much rapidly go into stage three, the stage of surgical anesthesia. That is the stage that is used for real surgery. There's general anesthesia. There is a loss of all sensation. And then, if you look on uh, page uh, at R4, on R4, so the fourth and final stage is the stage of respiratory paralysis, or death, the death stage. So, uh, in other words, if uh, somebody is using, uh, giving a general anesthesia, and nitrous oxide alone isn't sufficient to go this deep, but uh, other general anesthetics are, so uh, you can depress the brain so much that they go into a coma and can die. So, uh, but that's gone deeper than the stage used for surgery. Okay, so on the previous page, R3, here's the bottom line as far as the stages. So stage one is the stage that's usually used for nitrous oxide sedation, causing drowsiness, and uh, reduced and analgesia, pain relief, the pupils are normal, and the heart rate is usually relatively normal. If you go down, if you give too much at nitrous oxide, you enter stage two, a period of excitement, where the pupils start to dilate and the heart rate goes up. And as we said, you've actually given too much. It's not that you haven't given enough, but you've given too much. You have to lighten up a little bit. If we look on page R4, let's look on R4. So something else I want to remind you of is that nitrous oxide is stored in the blue cylinders and the good green gas that you've learned, the good green gas is oxygen. Oxygen is contained in the green cylinders. But I do want to remind you on R5, on R5 towards the bottom, uh, the termination of nitrous sedation. So initially you administer nitrous oxide with oxygen and then uh, when you're done uh, and you want to have the patient lighten up, so you flush them with pure oxygen. 
And uh, the nitrous oxide is actually, they're exhaling it. You're administering uh, pure oxygen because you want to prevent what's called diffusion hypoxia. Because as the nitrous oxide comes out of their body, uh, their lungs are, don't have enough oxygen, and you've got to make sure you give uh, adequate amounts. So usually 100% oxygen for five minutes to wash out that nitrous oxide to prevent what's called diffusion hypoxia. Hypoxia means a deficiency of oxygen. Also uh, on page um, R6, so how does nitrous oxide work? It actually, nitrous oxide on page R6, interferes with conduction of action potentials in the uh, brain. Uh, it produces depression, slows down electrical activity in the brain, uh, and, uh, but nitrous oxide alone is too weak to go into stage three surgical anesthesia, all right? But it can take you down to stage two, the period of the stage of excitement. On page uh, R7, on R7, the, the last thing I wanted to just mention is that nitrous oxide, and I think you've all heard this in your pain control class or class where you learn to use nitrous oxide. Nitrous oxide can lower the levels of an enzyme in the nervous system called the thionine synthetase. This is an enzyme that's needed for the synthesis of folic acid. Uh, and folic acid is needed for the synthesis of DNA and normal red blood cell production. What does all that mean? If you're, in envir if you're in an environment that uses a lot of nitrous oxide, I, here's what I would interpret from this. It would be a good idea to take vitamin uh, B supplements that contain folate or folic acid. That's what I mean. Uh, now again, they, they have scavenger systems to uh, take up the nitrous oxide so it's not being released into the air. But if you're exposed in, in working in a clinic where they use a lot of nitrous oxide for your own health, I would recommend you take folic acid or folate supplements. They can also develop uh, vitamin B12 deficiencies as well uh, related to pernicious anemia.